Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. The Sensex slides 900 points as stocks fall for the sixth trade day. The Nifty has lost over 1,000 points in six sessions. This is the worst losing streak that we've seen in the last eight months. Mid-cap seesaw, some recovery, but the index ends with cuts of over a percent. Israeli ground forces raid Gaza briefly, call it part of a preparation for the next stages of combat. The Red Cross says there is utter chaos at Gaza hospitals as supplies dwindle. U.S. President Biden makes a fresh call for the two-state solution, says the proposed Middle East corridor could be a reason for the Hamas attack. Cement major ACC misses estimates in the second quarter, even as revenue rises 11%. Asian Paints reports a mixed bag. Profits and margins are in line, but volume growth at 6% disappoints. Company blames erratic monsoons and the delayed festive season as that which hurt demand. Facebook's parent Meta reports record quarterly revenue of over $34 billion as advertising demand picks up. Profits cross $11.5 billion as the company reaps the benefits of cost cutting, but Meta shares decline after it warns of a slowdown in ad revenue. Sebi bans Nasiruddin Ansari, who runs the YouTube channel Barp of Chart, for offering unregistered investment advice under the garb of investor education, also orders him to refund over 17 crore rupees as it continues to crack down on finfluencers. Honasa Consumer, which owns the Mama Earth brand, sets a price band of 308 to 324 rupees a share ahead of its October 31st IPO, clears the way to give returns anywhere between 8 to 108 times to its pre-IPO investors. The management says offline channels will drive Mama Earth's growth. India moves to reduce the tensions with Canada, restores business and medical visa services in Canada, among others. This comes a month after India had suspended the visa services and asked Canada to scale down its diplomatic presence following Prime Minister Trudeau accusing India of its involvement in the killing of a Sikh separatist. The Enforcement Directorate summons Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot's son, Vaibhav, in a money laundering case, asks him to appear for questioning tomorrow in either Jaipur or Delhi, also raids State Congress President premises. The Chief Minister Gehlot says central agencies have no credibility left. At least 16 people are dead and more than 50 injured after mass shootings at Lewiston. In the U.S. state of Maine, police order people to shelter in as the hunt for the gunman continues. The Lal Street sees... Well, let's start with the day's market action. The last street seeing red for the sixth trade day. In fact, the market's posting their longest losing streak that we've seen since February of this year. So let's bring up the markets for you. The Nifty down 265 points. The Sensex ending with cuts of 900 points. The Nifty mid cap down almost 5, 450. And uh, the small cap index was flat, uh, but still in the red. So the broader markets, as we've been pointing out, did stage a recovery, but still closing down in the red, the mid-cap index saw cuts of over a percent, while the small-cap index fell a quarter of a percent. BSC companies have erased market cap of nearly 3 lakh crore rupees. Prashant is standing by now with the action from the blue chips. Uh, uh, Prashant, take us through what really is happening in the markets at this point in time, both in terms of the FIA activity and what the DIIs are doing and what uh, opinion tells you on where the markets are headed. Well, another down day, but with a difference. The Nifty did not recover. We lost quite a bit once again uh, on your screen. The Nifty Bank, similar kind of picture, not really, uh, no real big, big recovery. But the mid and the small cap indices did recover. And actually, especially the small cap index pulled back uh, and uh, almost, you know, came back into the green at one point. I only say this half jokingly because I'm also half serious. The small cap index here in India has been one of the strongest indices in the world and that some of that strength actually shown through. Uh, top Nifty losers on your screen, Mahindra and Mahindra, the Bajaj Twins, FinServe and Finance, UPL, Asian Paints and Nestle were what lost the most. Now, we've been dropping non-stop for six sessions in a row and the damage is on your screen. The Nifty, it adds up to a neat thousand points. In percentage terms, for the Nifty, that's 5%. For the Nifty Bank, it's about 5%. For the mid-cap index, it's about 75 The small-cap index is down about 7% uh, as well. Uh, you know, just to kind of not look going into stocks, but the damage in the NSE 500 universe over the last six sessions in numbers, only 21 out of 500 stocks actually in the six-day period are higher. Uh, 25 stocks out of the 500 are up, uh, are down more than 15%, and 25% of the universe, that is 125 stocks, are down over 10%.
Just a quick look at some supports and where they come in. This is the you know, last congestion zone where the market spent time before breaking out. For the Nifty, it's pretty close by, 1.5%, 2% away, around the 18,700 level. The mid-cap index, it's some distance away. The small-cap index is the August lows, which, is, uh, which comes in at about 11,500. The bank Nifty is the weakest. It's already broken through these uh, recent congestion zones. Uh, I want to end with a positive note because there were lots of pullbacks on the day's low as well. So look at some of these. Jindal saw 18% off the intraday lows. Adani Power, Apar Industries, BSC, 13% off the lows. Prestige, Mazgao Docs, Sonata Software, Sundaram Finance, Angel One, and many others as well. It's back to watching global markets. US yields back near 5%, which will be the dominating driver for that market and us as well when we come back tomorrow. Prashant, many thanks for joining us. So down day for the markets, uh, some recovery being seen in select pockets, as Prashant was pointing out. But on to earnings now. ACC posting a weak second quarter, missing street expectations. This even as margins and revenue improved year on year. The cement major's revenue rose 11% year on year, but fell 14% sequentially. Margins also missing estimates for ACC. On to Asian paints now, reporting lower than expected growth in volume, with sales in value terms remaining almost flat in the second quarter. Now, the company said that sales have been deferred to October as market sentiment was impacted by an erratic monsoon. Revenue has missed tweet expectations, profits and margins in line with estimates. That's Asian pains for you. Punjab National Bank reported a very good set of numbers in the second quarter. The bank's net profit rose nearly fourfold, while net interest income grew 20% on a yearly basis. Asset quality has also improved significantly on a sequential basis. Let's talk about global earnings now. Tech giant Meta beating street expectations for the third quarter. The company's revenues rose 23%. And this is the fastest rate of growth that we've seen at Meta since 2021. The rebound was largely driven by strong growth in its digital ads business. However, while Meta shares have declined after the company has warned of a slowdown in ad revenue. Arjun Karpal joins us now with a report card. Uh, Arjun, size up Meta's performance. Well, look, let's set the context here. It was uh, after a 150% rise in Meta's stock this year. Expectations were high for the social media giant going into this report, and it had very little room for error. And overall, the Q3 report card was strong. Revenue came in at $34.15 billion, its fastest revenue growth in two years. The so-called year of efficiency is going well, with net income up more than 160%, operating margins of 40%, the highest in two years. After that, the stock was initially higher, but it was the guidance for the fourth quarter that upset investors. Meta saying that Q4 revenue is expected to be between $36.5 billion to $40 billion, the midpoint of that missed analyst expectations. Arjun, many thanks. That is Meta for you. Now, software giant IBM's third quarter numbers beat Wall Street estimates. The company's overall revenue grew nearly 5% on an annual basis. Net profit hit $1.7 billion versus a net loss of $3.2 billion in the same quarter last year. The company's software unit posted over $6 billion in revenue. Auto major Mercedes-Benz reporting a drop in net profit and revenue for the third quarter. This is softer demand and foreign exchange rates hurt. The luxury car maker's bottom line, the company's quarterly net profit down 7% year-on-year, while car sales fell almost 4%. That is Mercedes-Benz for you. Morgan Stanley has appointed Ted Pick to succeed James Gorman as the CEO of the company. Ted Pick will begin his new role from January of 2024 with a career spanning over three decades at Morgan Stanley. Pick currently heads the firm's institutional securities division, so a change of guard at Morgan Stanley. The big story back home, Honasa Consumer, which owns brands like Mama Earth, Aqualogica and Dermaco, has had a price band of 308 to 324 rupees a share ahead of its October 31st IPO. Now, it's cleared the way to give returns of anywhere between 8 to 108 times to its pre-IPO investors. Among the selling shareholders in Mama Earth's IPO are prominent funds like Fireside Ventures, Sofina and Stellaris, actor Shilpa Shetty Kundra and entrepreneur Kunal Behel are among the selling individuals in that IPO. Three of them are now more than 100 crores right? in just the last three years' time. Right? In a space where you have not seen even larger companies being able to create such sizable brands in such short period of time. Right? does talk about our capabilities as an organization. The desire and dream right, is to make sure that we continue to deliver better growths than the market right, and continue to gain share. Right? So I think the aim will be 
to make sure that we outgrow the market and we 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 continue to delight our consumers right, by offering products that they really love. And all you need to know about the Honasa Consumer or Mama Earth IPO, then do catch our latest show, IPO KYC. The top queries that you may have are answered. Financial influencers are under the SEBI radar again with the latest order against Mohammed Nasiruddin Ansari, also known as the BAP of Chart. SEBI has barred Ansari from accessing the securities market till further notice and penalized him for offering unregistered investment advice under the garb of investor education. This action is similar to the action taken against another influencer, PR Sundar, in June this year. So why has this action been taken against Ansari? Shivani Bazaz explains. Shivani. Well, according to SEBI examination, Mohammad Nasruddin Ansari, also known as BAP of Chart, was giving stock recommendations through his social media platforms with the promise of guaranteed returns without a proper SEBI registration. All this was being done under the garb of educational training through his market courses. Apart from the monetary penalty, the notices in the matter, including Mohammad Nasruddin Ansari, P. Rahul Rao and Golden Syndicate Ventures, have been barred from the accessing the securities market until further notice. SEBI also found that Ansari was selling a total of 19 courses relating to the securities market, including four that promised investors assured returns. Some of the courses were advertised as sure short way of recovering all losses with a 99% guarantee. One course was also called MSP, Make Sure Short Profit, among others. Now sample some of the promises made if you buy these courses. You can make consistent profit. You can make money in all types of market. Bank Nifty Shaktiman strategy promises a chance to earn 200 to 300% profit. The SEBI investigation also found that Ansari provided buy-sell recommendations on his private groups on platforms like Telegram. These courses reached a wide audience through Ansari's big social media following. Ansari's YouTube channel has more than 4.43 lakh subscribers and more than 7 crore views. Here's the bottom line. The SEBI investigation found that Ansari has lost nearly 3 crore rupees from his own trading account in the period he was investigated. At the same time, he collected more than 17 crore rupees by selling courses which made promises like 5 minutes may sure shot profit. Shivani, many thanks for joining us. News from the court. The Supreme Court has held that states' amendments made to the VAT Act after the GST came into effect are invalid. The Apex Court made the ruling while hearing appeals on judgments of Telangana, Gujarat and Bombay High Court regarding the validity of that amendment act. On to the aviation space, Go First revival plan remains unclear with the employees not being paid for the last five months. Sources say there is no clarity whether the sole interested party, the Jindal Group, is a serious contender to revive the grounded airline. Madhya Mujava is standing by now with more details. Madhya, you know, time running out and still no clarity as far as the revival plan is concerned with the 180-day deadline approaching on the 6th of November. Well, Shireen, time is clearly running out for Go First with no clarity, as you said, yet on when the airline will be revived. And as you said, sources are telling CNBC TV18 that employees who have been desperately waiting for the airline to restart operations are staring at an uncertain future. The resolution professional held a town hall with airline staff yesterday, where the employees demanded their pending salaries of five months ahead of Diwali. But to their dis disappointment, the resolution professional said there is commitment, but no clarity on when their salaries will be paid paid he said the committee of creditors is not willing to make any fresh fund infusion remember the coc had infused 100 crores earlier as emergency funding which was used to pay employees and clear some mandatory payments now sources also say there is no clarity on whether the sole suitor the jindal group is a serious contender at all to revive the airline the group had only submitted its expression of interest and we don't know yet if there's any progress on that then there were hopes that the Wadia Group might infuse some funds into the airline after it sold the Bombay dying land in Wadli for 5,200 crores. But we are told the promoters have not committed to any fresh fund infusion so far and there's no clarity on whether they are interested at all in keeping the airline as they had already infused 4,600 crores since March 2020 till May of uh, 2023. Uh, then the emergency, in, which also included the emergency credit of 1,300 crores. But now, employees are running out of patients and after the uh, RP's communication yesterday, there might be more resignations at the airline. 
Madiha, many thanks for joining us. So the turbulence continues there for Go First. No clarity on revival. Time for us to end a short break, but up next, Israeli ground forces raid Gaza briefly, call it part of a preparation for the next stage of combat. That and more when we return. The Israel-Hamas war intensifies. Israeli ground forces raided Gaza, but briefly, and that happened overnight. They claim to have struck several Hamas cells and infrastructure. Israel says the raids are part of the preparation for the next stage of combat. Meanwhile, hospitals are running out of medical supplies and fuel in Gaza. Close family members of Al Jazeera Gaza bureau chief Vail Dahoud have been killed in an Israeli air raid. The journalist fled with his family to central Gaza after Israel's evacuation warning. U.S. President Biden has made a fresh appeal for a two-state solution after the conflict is over. There's no going back to the status quo as it stood on October the 6th. That means ensuring Hamas can no longer terrorize Israel and use Palestinian civilians as human shields. It also means that when this crisis is over, there has to be a vision of what comes next. And in our view, it has to be a two-state solution. It means a concentrated effort for all the parties, Israelis, Palestinians, regional partners, global leaders, to put us on a path toward peace. Well, that is President Biden. Enforcement Directorate has summoned Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot's son, Webhav. In an alleged money laundering case, the ED has asked him to appear for questioning tomorrow in either Jaipur or Delhi. They've also raided State Congress President's premises. The Chief Minister Gehlot has claimed that central agencies have no credibility left. In democracy, if there is such a government in Delhi, which is the most important thing to do, अपने कार्यों से, अपने व्यवहार से, अपने नीतियों से, अपने कार्यक्रमों से, अपने सिद्धांतों से, आप काम में हो, उसकी बजाय आप जो है, आप गुंडा किर्दी कर रहे हैं, गुंडा किर्दी ही है, ऊपर के दबाव के बगैर ना ईडी आ सकती है, ना सीबीआई, ना इनकम लेट जा सकती है। वर्तमान की अशोक गलोत सरकार ने भ्रष्टाचार के सभी मानविंदुओं को पार करके नए बेंचमार्क्स ऐसे बना दिए हैं। सरकार द्वारा प्रतियोगी परीक्षाओं के माध्यम से भर्ती की व्यवस्था पर से भी प्रदेश के लोगों का, प्रदेश के युवाओं का और प्रदेश के ऐसे एस्पिरेंट युवाओं के परिवार जनों का विश्वास समाप्त हो गया। well, the ED heat stepping up in Rajasthan. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Business 360. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The news continues when we return.